No, Ronnie, no! <coughs> hey, your, your prawn sandwiches are ready for the match. Oh yeah, you can just leave them on the table, thanks. Hello and welcome to HITC Sport, and I am the Irish guy, back with another edition of Football Origins. This time tackling all the big stories of the month, so welcome to the month of August. An utterly ridiculous four weeks in football, wasn't it? So Oli, what are your thoughts on your former teammate potentially crossing the Manchester Divide? <sighs> Couldn't care less. Oh, seriously? No, not seriously. You don't join one and then join the other. Anyone who joins both Manchester clubs, they have no soul. Boss, I'm standing right here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. For days, it looked like Ronaldo was set to quit Juventus for Man City. It's fair to say it caused the fans some sleepless nights. So I'm here with a bunch of Manchester United fans. Now tell me, Will there be any hard feelings if Cristiano Ronaldo does cross the Manchester Divide? Yeah, of course there is! Any Manchester United player goes to sign for Man City is absolute scum! Yeah, they're an absolute traitor! I agree. Haha! <laughs> Senior club legend signed for Man City! What?! <laughs> yeah, that's so embarrassing! So small time! Would never be my club! for the Man City fans, this is surely a dream come true. So I'm just here outside the Eddie Head with a group of Manchester City fans. So tell me, do you have any messages for the incoming Cristiano Ronaldo? Yes, Ronnie, I can't wait for you to come to Eddie Head. I can't wait to sniff your hair. I've always said you're the greatest player of all time. Wait, didn't you used to call him a cheating diving flamingo and said he had the end product of a tortoise? No, I never, what? Wait, in the mid-2000s, you used to call him a B-Tech Sean Wright Phillips. No, <laughs> shut up, what? And in 2006, after the World Cup, you set up a petition wanting him banned from the sport. Hey Ronaldo, I'm so so pleased to have you here at the Etihad. Yeah, okay, cut the bull. Who's the best player in the world? Oh, oh, well, no contest. Obviously, obviously you, Ronnie. Oh, come on, I've got five of these. <sighs> Whatever, I, I need my number seven shirt at Manchester City. Is that gonna be a problem? A problem? Not at all, Chris. I, I'll get someone to talk to him. No, go away. You're not getting my number seven shirt, old man. All right? Hey, Raz, can you please come down here so we can talk? No, Ronaldo's not getting it. I earned it. I put in the work and you're not giving it to him. It's mine. You're not getting it. No, I don't care. Come on, Raz, don't be ridiculous. You've got nine kids at home to feed. What? I don't have nine kids. Yes, yes, you do, Raz. I've done my research, okay? What? What, you calling them liars? Sorry, Ronnie. Things got a bit ugly there when we had to use the elephant tranquilizer. Uh... But the main thing is that we've got your number seven shirt. Brilliant, so that's it. We've agreed personal terms, bonuses, shirt number. Let's just hope nothing silly forces these talks to break down at the last minute, right? Yeah, definitely. Oh, by the way, Ronnie, check your inbox. I've just sent you the new and improved shirt that you'll be wearing for us this season. <laughs> yes, yes, I can't believe we're signing Ronaldo. Oh, no, mate, if you're not heard. We're not signing Ronaldo, he's going to Old Trafford instead. Oh no, are you serious? What am I supposed to do with this? Mate, how do you think I feel? Ah, oh, yeah, good, good, good point. Manchester United finally got their man after tying up a bargain 42 million pound deal for World Cup winning Galactico centre half Rafael Varane. It Fair to say, there were one or two snags holding up the deal. Hi Varane, we're so happy to have you here at Manchester United. Who's my partner at centre back? I'm used to the best. Oh, well, um. Have you heard of a certain Harry Maguire? No. Where do he used to play? He, he, um, he used to play at Hull City. Oh, is he the one whose head looks like a f***ing TV? Yeah, but listen, don't worry, Varane, okay? We'll make you one of the highest paid players at the club. Do you have any other requests to put in the contract? I'd love a big mansion. Absolutely. And a new Rolls Royce. Of course. And I want the shirt number four. Oh, um, let me, let me, let me see what I can do. I fail. Phil Jones brought you some rat heads. Phil? Phil, it's just Ollie here. Phil? What do you want? Hi, Phil. Yeah, just... The thing is, we, we just signed Rafa Varane. We were wondering, would it, would it be possible to, to take your number four shirt? I'll take that as a no then. Uh, sorry, Varane, can't do that. You could have number 19 instead. What? Every 
great year. Supporters look forward to the Champions League group stage draw with bated breath as they get ready to plan their autumn European trips. And after an 18 month pandemic, it's fair to say excitement was through the roof. We got to the St. Petersburg. I'll get the Russian hats. We got PSG. I'll get the berets. We've got young boys. I'll get the van. Well, I right, let's try to win 600,000 subscribers as soon as possible. If you're new here and you want to see more content like this and slap that red button in the teeth, but also, while you're here, voting closes tomorrow for the Football Content Awards. Somehow, I've been nominated in Best in Video Small Business. So if you haven't voted yet, and you want to see me pull off an underdog story at Football Daily's expense, then slap that vote button in the teeth too. Link in description. Anyway, back into the video. The football world was rocked by the bombshell that Barcelona were forced to get rid of Lionel Messi and his agents subsequently touted him around Europe's top suitors. I'm guessing negotiations were quick. Listen, Leo, we would love to have you here, honestly, but just one problem, um, we won't be able to give you your, your number 10 shirt. What? Well, I'm sure you can understand. We've given it to Jack Grealish, who, according to the British press, is the greatest footballer to ever touch a ball. Hello, Leo, I'm Phil. As you can see here, we've got a pretty professional setup here at Inter Miami. Yeah, great to meet you, Phil. Have you got a good managerial CV? Well, I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but um, I've actually managed England at a World Cup semi-final, so um, I've learned quite a few things. You're not pregnant, are you? No? Sorry, force of habit. Now, Leo, we can't afford to give you a weekly wage as such, but we're prepared to offer you a zero-hours contract with a voucher for our free subway on Fridays. Actually, Leo, just received an email from Susan from Accounts. We're actually going to need to have that voucher back. Deal. Although, let's be honest, Messi was always going to ring his former teammates for a bit of career advice. Hey, Angel, tell me, you've lived there before. What's it actually like in Manchester? Don't do it! Don't do it! Whatever you do, don't go to Manchester! Never go to Manchester! It's hell on earth! Hey, Gonzalo, I just met one of the weird Neville brothers. Tell me, what's the setup actually like at Inter Miami? Hi, uh, Leo. It's great. They give you all the chicken wings you want. Hey, Gonzalo! Gonzalo, it's time for training! I'll be five minutes, man! Hey, Neymar, great news, mate! Can't wait to play with you again next season! Yeah, 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 that's great. One second, I'm just in the middle of something. Can I call you back in a sec? It's fair to say the news utterly rocked the foundations of the club and I'm sure the new summer transfers by comparison probably felt a bit meh. <sighs> Hello? Hi Coon! Yeah, it's the club here. Just just making sure you're you're settling in alright. Listen, bad news I'm afraid. You'll never believe it. We uh we don't actually have the, the funds to register you as a player for the season. Well that's a shame. I mean, at least I still get to train with my childhood buddy Leo Messi, right? Hey. Uh, yeah, no, we're, um, we're actually selling him to, to PSG. What? Yeah, but don't worry, Kuhn, okay? We've, we've already got his replacement signed up and ready to go. We've, um, we've just sent him around to your flat for a chat so you, can, so you can meet. Hi, I'm Memphis. We used to be neighbours at Manchester. I'm the one who couldn't get past Ashley Young. Milan fans were rocked by the news that their club decided to cash in on Romelu Lukaku to Chelsea. The, the fans in Italy weren't best pleased. I can't believe we sold Lukaku, he was our everything! But when we signed him, you said he had the first touch of a dead donkey. Hey, less of that! Don't worry though, mate, we are international. We always replace great with great. I mean, remember when we sold Zlatan Ibrahimovic to Barcelona? Yeah. Yeah, and who did we sign instead and win the treble? Samuel Eto'o. Exactly, show some faith at the Inter board. I'm sure we'll make an exciting, world-class statement of intent. Look, look, there's breaking news on the club's website. Who is it? Who did we get? I, I, I don't want to say. Who is it? Harry Kane? No. Lewandowski? No. Come on, who is it? Edin Dzeko? <laughs> Having to fork out such a fee for Lukaku to bring him back to Stamford Bridge, it was a costly risk for Chelsea. But I'm sure lessons were learned at boredom level. Well, we've done it, mate. We've brought Lukaku back for over 100 million pounds, but... Phew, that's a lot of money, isn't it? <sighs> you know what, mate? You're right. That is a lot of money. This is the wake-up call we need. From this day forward, I vow to be different. As a club, instead of prioritizing and scouting the next big thing from Europe, 
From this day forward, I vow that we focus on the talent and youth we already have at our disposal. Hey boss, I'm just here to clear out stuff from my locker. Why, are you still here? I thought I told you to get on that damn flight to Rome. Honestly. Jack Grealish penned a 100 million pound deal move to Man City. I mean, he says he was gutted to leave Aston Villa. Yeah. I'm so happy to sign for Manchester City. It's a dream come true to be here. Well, Jack, we saw yesterday that Lionel Messi was in tears and had been forced to leave Barcelona. Was it the same sort of thing for you when you broke the news to your teammates? Um. Lads? Lads, I've got some devastating news. Oh, okay, what is it? What's the problem, Jack? Manchester City have offered me a deal. I'm being forced to live in a mansion. I'm gonna have to drive three Lamborghinis. It's just not fair. <sighs> Actually, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't lie. <laughs> Enjoy finishing 12th! Uh, yeah, I was, I was devastated. Real Madrid are a club who marketed the Super League as the answer to everyone's financial prayers. Giving off a vibe that they too were also broke. Yeah, Florentino Perez's words were very quickly exposed. So Florentino, any regrets on your Super League pitch? No, not at all. We don't even have enough money for toilet water. Our lunch lady is having to defecate in the lunchbox. We can't even afford a lawnmower for the training pitch. We need the Super League. Isn't that a Rolex? <laughs> Alright then. Let's make a bid for Mbappe. PSG director Leonardo reacted to the opening bid by trying to tap into Mbappe's sense of morality regarding the luminary expiration in his contract. <sighs> I want to leave for Real Madrid. Now, Kelly, we know. We know you want to leave for Spain, but you promised us last year that you would not leave us on a free transfer next summer. I know what I said. I know what I said. Any footballer who leaves that club at the end of a contract is not a sign of a man. I know, I know, I know. They are selfish. A selfish, greedy and poisonous coward. They are a stain on our game as we chase back into the sewers like the rat that they are. Sorry to interrupt Leonardo, but where do you want your framed painting of your marquee superstar free signings? Oh lad, you, you, you literally couldn't have picked a worse time. Chelsea held an open day training session at Stamford Bridge, allowing fans and players to come together for the first time in 18 months. I'm sure everyone was on the same page. Alright guys, you come to the Chelsea open training session they're putting on at Stamford Bridge this afternoon. Yeah mate, I'm bringing the kids, the whole family, got some thank you cards for the players, got some flowers for their wives. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a great way to give back and show our appreciation for our Champions League heroes. Oh, um... Yeah, I, 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 I guess. Yeah, mate, it's been a really tough 18 months for everyone. I'm sure the players could, could do with us, you know, showing our, our full support for them during the tough times. I, I, I suppose. But what about you, mate? What, what, what gesture of appreciation are you going to show the lads? Um... <laughs> Harry Kane to Manchester City was the will they won't they transfer sack of the summer. Stemming from when the England captain tried underhand tactics in the media to force his way out of Spurs before the Euros. Hi Charlie, Harry here. Get me on Oprah, mate. <laughs> what? Sorry? Well, we've just seen Prince Harry do a tell-all exclusive on Oprah. Well, listen, I'm King Harry, and I need to do the same. Oh, why? You got any creepy uncles? What? No, 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 mate. I just need it to be made known to the public that, that I need to leave Spurs without actually handing in a transfer request. Yeah, a bit tricky. Probably won't be able to get you on Oprah, considering about 0.4% of the American population even know or, or care who you are. Okay, what about Jeremy Paxman then? Yeah, he usually just covers politics and stuff. Or, or, or Michael Parkinson. Harry, I think he's retired. Graham Norton? No, listen, I can probably get you an hour on a golf course with Gary Neville. But he constantly smells like a badger's foot. Okay, but remember H, whatever you do, Daniel Levy is a powerful negotiator. Whatever you do, don't do something silly like tell Neville what transfer fee you think you're worth. Don't worry, Charlie, I'm not that thick. Yeah, so Gary, I think I'm worth about 100 million pounds. Oh, sh Hey, Harry, there you are, mate. Tom might be looking all over for you. What book are you reading? Oh, hi, mate, no. Just getting some transfer tips from one of the greatest strikers of all time. Oh, is it any good? Oh yeah, it's the best. One of the most highly anticipated debuts of the month was Arsenal's 50 million pound centre back revelation Ben White, who travelled to Brentford on a Friday night. It's fair to say it might have left a few scars. Hey Ben, are you okay? Who was that out there? Was that drop in a Brentford shirt? Uh, no mate, that was Ivan Tony, you know, the former Scunthorpe striker. 
why do we pay 50 million for someone who clearly can't jump? So Ben, this is your first therapy session. How's your first week been at Arsenal? Oh, Doc, it's horrible. I see him everywhere I look. Okay, what do you mean when you say you see him everywhere? What's that? Oh, I'm sorry, that's just my box of cereal. <laughs> Bamford was the name on everyone's lips and foot this month and he finally realized that boy would dream by getting that call up from England Hi Patrick, have you heard the big news? What? Let me guess another Irish oaf this thing's a cat piece has got me tattooed in his thigh now Christ above. Nah, you've been called up for England, mate. Oh, I better get back to Mick McCarthy then. I've had that geezer on hold for years. Hi, Mick Paddy here. Sorry, mate. I won't be able to play for Ireland after all of... Wouldn't you know it have been called up for England? Oh no, it's fine, Patrick. I don't work for the FBI anymore. I'm living in Canada for the minute. Just trying to integrate myself into the local culture. <laughs> Alright, so which one of you wants to be my wife? Fantasy football grips the sport every August. With everyone, and I mean everyone creating a team before the opening game of the season. But some people do have the tactical inside of a waterlogged shoe. <laughs> Hello? Hello, are you busy? Just crying into my bowl of shreddies, but no, I can talk. All right. I'm entering fantasy football with the girls from the knitting club. I'm picking a team, but I just need some tactical advice. Uh, okay. Right. So, which one of the long staffs should I pick? What? No, no, that's like asking which one of the Jedward brothers you want to sing you to sleep. Neither of them. What? How do I... How do I make sure my players aren't suffering from dehydration? They're not allowing me to pick a physio or a chef. What? No, they're, they're just pixels on a screen. This isn't the f***ing Sims. Right. I've picked drink water. Just in case. <sighs> All right, now I know I need to pick a Norwich defender. Why? How many Brentford left backs should I pick? How many? What? Now, I know from your sticker collection that Henri was good, so I'm choosing him. Yeah, no, 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 that, that's Rico Henry. No, he's a fat lump of chewing gum. Do not pick. I've been looking for an hour. I can't find Robbie Keane anywhere. But no, what are you doing? No, pick some Man City players, pick some Liverpool players, stay away from Arsenal players. No, there's there's a lot to know for fantasy football, okay? Can we hurry this along? I'm wanting to watch the human centipede after lunch. Okay, fine, okay, listen. Tell me, who have you who have you picked as captain? What? What? I'm really expecting a big season from Gilfie Sink or something. Anyway, that's the end of this. Let me know in the comments below. What do you want to see this Football Origins return for every month? If you do, let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.